yellow. Hmm. I'm finding it interesting the way the things as they roll into my life across my email, my YouTube site, that kind of thing. Um, the things people send me and just interactions like that are uh, how do I say they're they're bringing the fruit of my present moment I don't know how to say this I was just communicating with someone and uh, I realized that a lot of what I say about going in heart and how it's its own separate kingdom um, it will take you up and out of 3D so that your body remains in the world uh, but in a way you don't and uh, maybe that's one way to look at the in the world but not of it statement but that the various ways we choose to perceive things they're all just fine uh, there's nothing wrong with that uh, whatever it is there are simply options presented at all times uh, and in our making choices we either uh, travel up the spiral or travel down and uh, a lot of times you think well that means if I make the wrong choice I'm going down the spiral no it doesn't um, if you're following where you're led if you're following heart doing your best to do that there is no wrong choice um, it doesn't exist. There are only right choices. Uh, good, better, and best is, is all that's there for you. And no one um, outside of yourself is able to judge that. Uh, this whole thing of judgment gets a big rest when you go into heart. And you realize uh, and you see, oh my gosh, it's discernment. It's discretion. And judgment is just a, a, a lesser way, a less enlightened way of seeing things. And you realize that everyone's in this sense, okay, now be in heart to hear this. Everyone's right. Everyone's all right the way they are. We've been so programmed with this, frankly, mean and judgmental and temperamental God business and this whole idea that there's some kind of hellfire and damnation where this creator being would choose to place elements of his creation, her creation, and leave them there forever and ever, that is frankly bizarre. Um, it's just the product of a, um, a less enlightened way of seeing things. The interesting thing being that our vision creates. And so if you have enough people believing that there's got to be some horrendous judgment uh, uh, around Armageddon in 2012 and all this kind of thing, and, and if, you know, too many people on the earth believed that this is really happening and were fearful and doing their preparation and all that kind of thing, they would bring it about, not even realizing that they are the creators of that. They are being used, manipulated, and controlled in order to bring it about. But they wouldn't realize the part that they were playing. And so it gets really trippy. Tricky and trippy, this thing about vision. And at a certain point, if we lay all of that aside, because we know that wisdom is simple, you know, when we get to, I don't know if there is ultimate truth, but when we get down to, to things that are actually true or that really resonate with that, it's very simple. 
Um, it's not complex at all. It's shockingly simple. So if we lay all of that aside, um, what we're functioning with across the board is, is our beliefs. Uh, right, left, and center, wherever you look, um, it's our beliefs that are acting in this world of illusion that, that we are self-creating. It's a co-creation. We're in this together. We're very much linked up. But back to the simplicity. Um, at some point, you experience and you realize that the fundament of the foundation of everything the closest word that we have for this is love. And it's got to be capitalized to distinguish it from the, the joke that is the mental concept of love. The mind cannot grok love. Um, and it tries and it does its little dances and plays its little games, but uh, that's not looking with any depth. So if we say that the whole entire creation, all of it, is love manifest. And you have to get out of your head for this because your head will have arguments for just about anything I say. But if you go in your heart, see, the trick is that your heart knows things. And you're not normally connected to that because you're listening to the chatter of the mind. We all are. But by letting go of the mind and being willing to spend at least some time in heart, you can hear things sometimes in a whole different way. And, and you can realize, oh my God, I know things that I didn't know that I know and I don't know how I know them and I don't understand this one bit, but I feel it, you know. I, I connect, I resonate with that. And so it takes but a moment to accept that love is the foundation of and for all. And once this is accepted, all bets are off. Everything changes so much that you just you're off on the greatest adventure that ever was everything everything gets reinterpreted through eyes of love now this doesn't fix all the blemishes and, and mend all of the, the terrible things that, that you know I'm not saying that but all of that doesn't matter. That doesn't rise to the level of importance or significance of the divine love that's under it all. Now there's an interesting word that gets used and abused, faith. And uh, I think it's possible that Accepting this could be an activity of faith. Because while you can be taken into the depths in your heart, into the heights, um, and you can have direct experience of this, there will be times when you're just out and about and doing the best that you can where you are and you lose contact with it. And on the surface of things, it doesn't look to be the case that divine love is anywhere present sometimes. You know, well, that depends on the quality of your vision. And that's a choice. That's a choice you can always make to pull back, to pull your energies out of the matrix and out of belief that things are what is apparent, what is seen. Nothing is what it looks to be, nothing at all. And so, anyway, I was just 
pondering and marveling because I don't usually think in terms like that of faith, uh, the Christian concept. But I think that this could well be what the, the master meant when he would say things like, your faith healed you. I might say, in that case, your vision healed you. Same thing. So, I call for peace among men, meaning men, women, and children, of course, and the peace of realizing that everybody is fine, right where they are, right as they are and that they've got the right to do and be that, whatever it is. And once we start giving our fellows the right to just be, and to be the way they want to be, and realizing that we're not in charge of their choices, we're only in charge of ours, I think some real progress can result, some real and, and deep, deep abiding change is the potential in every microsecond. New vision is there for us always, and there's no end to it. It's the journey. Let's not be looking for destinations, and let's realize that it's the step that we're taking right now that's the ultimate. 2012 and all that, you know, I don't know, it's a lark. Uh, I talk about it too, but it doesn't exist on these really deep levels where everything is so ultimately simple. And so my invitation and the light that flows through my heart calls to you and you and you to come in. Throw away the old rule book. All rule books are of the mind. That's who and what created that. And throw away judgment and blame, criticism, all of that sort of thing. I say throw them away because if you try to bring them in heart, you won't make it across the threshold. There's no fear there either. And so to willingly let these things go, speed ups, speed ups, speeds up our entry into this sacred space where all can abide for all time no matter what appears to be the surface of life. Good day, good life, good now.